Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I think today is the perfect day for my speech as it is the World Refugee Day. And thank you, Maro, for the connection and the important symbolism. My name is Pepi Papadimitriou. I come from Greece and I work as a refugee education coordinator in the Ritsona refugee camp, the biggest one in central Greece with a population of 3,000 people from which 800 are children in school age, coming from more than 10 different countries. One of the main access for education in the 21st century, as formulated by Jacques Delors, was also how to live with the others. This goal is always up to date and reflects as much never before the conditions of our time. The explosion of the refugee phenomenon and migration has brought European societies to new challenges, but also dilemmas and fears. And in our country, the education system has become the main mechanism for the smooth integration of refugees into society through its direct response to the right of all children to education. One of the major tasks facing the refugee child when arriving in a new country is to adapt to a new school environment. In coming to grips with this task, the child brings many pre-migration, trans-migration and post-migration characteristics and experiences that have the potential to facilitate or interfere. For example, the nature of the flight and the refugee experience, level of literacy in first language and parental support. One set of post-migration variables that will critically influence the child's adaptation process resides within the school, namely the characteristics of schools and teachers. It is important here to emphasize that not only will the refugee child be required to adapt, but schools, teachers and existing students will also need to adapt. To know how best to prepare teachers to meet the needs of refugee children's, children and how to create schools that can meet these needs in, is crucial. The integration of students from migrant backgrounds, backgrounds into schools is a complex process which aims to give children and young people access to quality education and to provide any necessary language, learning and social emotional support. It also involves helping them to adapt to their new school environment and ensuring that they make good progress in their learning. Taking the process a step further means ensuring that this environment is welcoming for students from diverse backgrounds and with different needs and guaranteeing a safe space where all students feel secure, valued and able to learn. Access to education and training is a universal human right, regardless of legal status. However, access alone is not sufficient if it is not combined with quality education and training. That means the opportunity to enroll in schools, providing high quality teaching, learning and support, as well as educational pathways, which meet students' learning needs and aspirations. Children and young people from migrant backgrounds backgrounds may face challenges in both areas. In educating the children from Ritsona Hospitality Center and integrating them into the schools of Halkida, which is the city where they are studying, diversity has not only been an obstacle, but has also been an opportunity to enrich and evolve the school community. This was achieved through the concerted effort of the refugee educator and coordinators, the school principals, the teachers of the reception classes, and the teachers associations of the schools, and the inclusion practices adapted to enable this integration. Through all these practices and actions of integration, democratic values are promoted and strengthened, and education becomes a conduit for the transmission and diffusion of all the principles that govern or should govern a democratic society. It is the result of clear efforts by educators to put in place arrangements and opportunities that make democracy a reality and that create democratic structures and processes that regulate everyday school life. The teacher system not only embraced the refugee students, 
but also became the body for education and consolidation in practice by students of values such as equality, respect for human rights, democracy, and respect for cultural diversity. Learning and experiencing democracy is a daily process in which education and training play an important role in development of the democratization of the citizen and their participation in the public. And with its turn, ensures democracy and promotes social cohesion, tolerance of diversity, respect for human rights and recognition of obligations. Education in a democracy becomes even more necessary and important for refugee populations who either do not come from democratic regimes or either our societies do not operate with institutions similar to those of our country. And in this regard, the school, in addition to educating children, can become a school for the consolidation of democratic values by them and their parents. Through the interaction and coexistence of the native student population with refugees, the school becomes a living space experience in practice of all the values described above. Greek law uh, 3879 of 2010 introduces the institution of zones of educational priority. Objective of these zones is the equal, equal integration of all students in the education system through the function of support actions to improve learning performance, such as the operation of classrooms in particular, where refugee student, students are taught the Greek language three hours per day. In addition, there are issues regulated relating to the organization and the operation of these zones, their staffing, employment teachers in, proportions, in proportion to the number of students in need, differentiated teaching intervention and any related issues. Also, for the education of students who do not have the required knowledge of the Greek language, like Roma population, foreigners, repatriates, refugees, vulnerable social groups, etc., is formed within intercultural education, a flexible institutional and didactic scheme of intervention which allows the school unit, after weighing the real educational needs of these students and their possibilities, to choose that format that can provide them with extra didactic support in order to help them adapt and integrate fully in the regular classes in which they are enrolled according to legislation. However, many times practical problems arrive arise that they cannot be predicted by the legislative framework or run into consolidated perceptions of education providers or in bureaucratic entanglements. From declaration up to application, in other words, there is a gap which only the educational community as a living organism with will, imagination and creativity is called to exceed effectively so that the stated goals be put into practice. A lot of integration, integration practices were realized from schools as, for example, welcome activities right in the first day of refugee children at school. Their first day there is very important for them to feel that they come to a warm environment and somewhere where gradually they can know they belong to as there aren't any other stable factors in their life or the participation of schools in integration programs, where all teachers collaborated with school counselors in order to adapt good practices to achieve better and faster inclusion of refugee students. The main objective of these programs is that refugee children are integrated in Greek schools that are safe and inclusive for all. Through the project, schools direct, school directors and teachers are trained to create safe and inclusive schools and classrooms, where refugees are welcomed into a learning environment which aims to provide quality education to all. The, train, the training aims to equip school directors and teachers with the tools, competence and confidence to manage controversy and deal with issues concerning intolerance, discrimination, racism and hate speech in school and the lake, the local community. Throughout the school year, School teams of school heads, teachers and parents representatives are trained and mentored by experienced trainers. The whole school is involved in school activities and workshops. 
Unfortunately, this year, because of the pandemic, schools didn't have the chance to complete the programs, but we hope next school year will give them this chance again. The school holidays, visits, school activity programs and other activities constitute integral part of school life and operate effectively towards the direction of refugee inclusion and integration. The refugee children are very happy when they participate in school parties and activities with the other children. And for this, teachers goal should be to transcend practical obstacles in order to help them participate equally with the other children. Through participation in school activities, students show off and develop all their skills, build relationships, and are practically trained in cooperation and acceptance of diversity. There were many examples in the past in the schools of Halkida which worked positively, positively in this direction. Refugee high school students took part in theatrical educational program called the Theater at the New School, which was realized in collaboration with the National Theater. The participation of the children in this program had a huge effect on them as it helped them express themselves and eliminate their introversion. The product of the, pro of the program was an open event in Halkida where refugee parents also attended. Refugee students took part in radio contests or in the creation of short films. And this gave them the chance to unfold some talents that otherwise they would have never the chance have never had the chance to do and more self-esteem than any other activity will do. Also, they participate in European programs with their fellow students and contributed a lot to the success of these programs. The opening of the Refugee Hospitality Center in any possible way in the local community and the relationships created through that have been very useful for removing the exclusion, isolation and ghettoization. The school can also contribute to this direction, forming the link for joint open events and the participation of local community. In this context, the 15 member students council of a junior high school, accompanied by 12 other students of the school, the principal and the teacher, visited the Ritona Refugee Hospitality Center following a wish expressed by all the children, the rest of the children of the school, to get to know the place where the classmates live. There, they were guided, they were offered a meal which had been prepared by the refugee parents, and they play football and volleyball. In the celebration organized for the end of Ramadan, Eid al-Fitr, how is it called, there was sent an invitation to parents, associations, and teachers as well as the principals of the schools to attend. Those who attended ate and danced together, overcoming prejudices and the fear of the different others that refugee is for many people. In the direct direction of connecting and integrating refugees in the local society, as stated earlier, are included actions that took place outside the hospitality center with the participation of refugees. The participation of students in the governing bodies of the school and in the 15th member school Council is an important training and consolidation in practice of democratic institutions. In this context, in a high school of Halkida, they have designated two refugee students as links of the other refugee students with the 15th member school council of the school, so that they can be equally represented in it. And if that is not an example of democracy, what is then? This year, the primary school children in Ritona attended refugee reception and education structures. That means afternoon schools that operated in primary schools when they finished their morning program. In these schools, the refugee children were alone without Greek students. This institu institution was chosen as a necessary solution in the first years of the arrival of the migratory flows in Greece in order to integrate all the refugee children in the educational system. But in essence, it does not contribute at all to the degradation and inclusion of these children in schools, as it deprives them of the opportunity to enroll with the other kids. For the next school year, all the children have been enrolled in morning schools so that their integration in them can be achieved. Overall, the education of refugee children in schools has been a challenge for the whole education community 
which was made possible and successful through collaboration of all actors in the educational community. This experience of integration, we believe that it will be an important chapter for further planning of integration policies for all vulnerable social groups. Inside from all these integration practices and actions, as previously described, democratic values are promoted and strengthened and the education becomes a channel of transmission and diffusion of all the principles that govern or should govern a democratic society. And the schools where refugee children attend classes can be the shining example and the signal on the road to the defense of democratic freedom and rights. But apart from the typical education, a bright example of democratic education has been the organization in the camp of peer teaching method schools. Because of the long-term absence of refugee children from state schools, as a result of the restrictions which were imposed because of the pandemic, but also because of problems with the local authorities, all nationalities in the camp organized community schools where their native language, as well as Greek, English, German, and French language, were taught by those who had the knowledge and could do it. Even teenagers became teachers to the younger ones, and this helped them to keep in touch with education and knowledge for as long they weren't able to attend classes in state schools. The community school teachers attended online workshops and seminars organized by NGOs in the camp, and this gave them a greater competence and helped them re reinforce their skills and knowledge. Peer learning activities yielded the following results for both the tutors and tutees. Team building spirit and more supportive relationships, greater psychological well-being, social competence, community communication skills and self-esteem and higher achievement and greater productivity in terms of enhanced learning outcomes. Students learn a great deal by explaining their ideas to others and by participating in activities in which they could learn from their peers. They developed skills in organizing and planning learning activities, working collaboratively with others, giving and receiving feedback and evaluating their own learning. We as education, co education coordinators, support them in any way we could, from, gi from giving them space for their lessons to providing them education material, as well as masks, stationery, and notebooks that we got through donations. And as you all know, the weather here in Greece is mostly sunny. Many of these lessons were given often outdoors, under the trees, something which added to children's benefits. One more thing, the contact with the nature. The community school education soon extended to other subjects, such as art, and children were taught by those who had an artistic talent to make wonderful crafts. Beside that, there was created an Afghan girls football team, which was being coached by a young Afghan. Also, something else worth referring to is that the young Afghan girls created an activist group called the Youth Refugee Movement. It started as an information and awareness group for coronavirus protection measures in the camp, but gradu gradually they have dealt with a lot of subject, subjects, such as um, environment, gender equality, freedom of speech, etc. And every Friday, they were organizing a march around the camp, holding all the placards and banners they made during the week, exposing their opinion and thesis on the subject they had chosen to inform people about. This project kept all these girls active, helped them learn a lot about every subject they were dealing with, and made them feel stronger and more self-confident. These community schools and projects have been for all of us an excellent example of cooperation between different nationalities and a way sometimes to overcome any of their difference. And it showed everybody that education can always be the best way to strengthen democracy, but also peace and equality. And that if we want a better world, the first thing to do is to give access to education for all children, wherever they are and they, can, they come from. Thank you.
Debbie, thank you so much. This was so revealing. I don't know how to say it. Thank you. Thank you for the preparation. And uh, we have time for questions. Are you ready to be interrogated, Pepe? Yes, yes. I'm always ready for everything. <laughs> I was. Can I go first? Because uh, we discussed something the other day, and you told me that uh, because of the pandemic, children could not attend school from the yeah. refugee camp. And mm. uh, but you mentioned that they kind of created a school within the camp where older kids taught younger or different languages I did not understand very well. Would you yes. care to say something about this? Yes, that was amazing because um, indeed they created uh, community schools, peer teaching uh, schools, where the, the adults as well as teenagers uh, taught the rest of whatever language they, they knew. First of all, their native language, okay? And also the English language, because uh, especially the Afghans uh, speak very well English and uh, Arabic and uh, as the native language and French language, because we have a, an African community as well in the camp and English, uh, Greek and uh, Greek, not many people, uh, spoke Greek, but whoever spoke Greek could be a teacher to the rest of, of them. And um, we gave them space because we have some containers, because this is what we have, the containers. And they could have their, um, their lessons there. We made the program. We gather all those that were willing to become teachers. And we made the program. And we provided them with whatever they needed, with stationery and with masks, because um, due to the pandemic, uh, they were obliged to wear masks in the classrooms. And whatever they needed for blackboards and uh, notebooks and pens and everything like that. And it keeps going on up to now. It was, it was amazing, the organization and the, uh, and the willingness and the... I don't know, we were, uh, we are teachers, but we were amazed by, by what happened in these community schools and how much, how, how easily they organized them and how many children and adults attended these lessons. These are mixed stages uh, lessons. I mean, adults could also attend. Yes, there were, um, yes. There were mixed uh, classes as well, but also classes only for adults or classes only for children. And where the teenagers were the teachers, the classes uh, were younger children from five years old uh, at were attending the, the lessons. Thank you. That was, uh, I've been thinking about this. And I wanted to ask you, thank you. Gabriel? Yeah, thank you very much. I have to real. I was didn't get all because I, my head is still full from the general meeting and the last day, so I missed a lot of your talk. But generally, I just want to to say um, thank you very much that you are doing this work because I think the most of the movement we are here, most of the schools and environments, is like a really exclusive elitarian uh, group of people. Mm -hmm. So this is one of the problems of this movement. This is, I mean, yesterday there was a talk that is like just for, for rich people, it seems. No, this is a real problem we are working on. So mm -hmm. first of all, um, thanking you from, from the bottom of the heart that you take over this important uh, task. And um, for me, especially because I'm at Canary Islands and I think Canary Islands is one of the four main migration routes of of Europe, yes. no, with Greece, yes. um, Italy, and South Spain and Canary Islands. I mean, mm. these are the four. So we have this issue also here. We are really not connected because it's well, we have so much trouble. But you, you touching me, and because I already thought a few times, what what can we do here? 
So um, because we are also in a hotspot of migration, mm -hmm. so I'm very interested to get like impulses or to get more into contact right now. My brain is smoking already, so I'm not really um, capable to, to really think into it. But I would really uh, maybe like to establish a contact to, to get like input from you, to get impulses yes. from you, what we could do here maybe. But this for us is really, really sensitive because we as a democratic school with kids which are older than six years, this legal situation is a little bit like fragile or, or sensitive. So this makes it hard for us to step up and to go on a, an official level. And this is a little bit the difficulties we have here generally and will be also when we talk about getting to the authorities to say, hey, we want to do something, we want to help. For example, what we did, we did collect uh, some um, material like clothes and, and food and stuff. We handed over to the, to the camps, to the refugee camps. We did this a few times, but like get into real interaction and in social interaction, um, it's, it's hard for us. And we have, for example, one father of our community. He actually was a refugee and his own son is now in our school, which is very beautiful. So, mm -hmm. well, this is just, uh, I hope that we can have some exchange in, in the future because it's so, so important. It's a big uh, tragedy which is going on mm -hmm. on our European borders. So thank you very much. And I hope to get more impulses from you. Yeah. Uh, I'll be glad <laughs> to, to have a contact with you. Can I ask, uh, Refugee children in uh, Canary don't go to school. They are not um, attending classes. Nothing at all. I really don't know. I really don't know how how it's managed. I'm. I have to realize that I'm. I'm not. They're like centers, and I don't know if they go to school. If they're sent to school, I would say no. I have not not heard that. Mm -hmm because here is mandatory for all children uh, to get enrolled in schools three months after their identification. And this year we had uh, some problems with the local authority and reactions from our municipality, and we fought against the reaction, but based on the law. And we managed, of course, to send all children at school because this is the law. It's, it's, an, it's not a Greek law, it's international law. All children who should have an access to, to school, to state schools, because this is, this is in fact democracy in education. Democracy, we cannot have democratic schools if all children don't have access to these schools, I think. So, yes. I, I guess once, I think once their status is cleared and they go to the centers, then they will. But when they arrive, yes. immediately, I guess not. Once they're like um, channeled into the system, yes. into the minor system, and to, they go to the centers, I guess probably yes, because they can't send back like the yes. adult ones, right? Yes, yes, no, they can't send back. So yes, I'll, I'll be glad to have a contact that, to, to tell you whatever you need, it will be useful for you. Thank you for your kind words, thank you. No, thank you very much, really. You're doing a job for all of us, so thank you very much. Pepe, I wanted to ask if there's a coordination between the the people who are responsible for education in other camps too, or is it um, independently? Every one of you works independently, or there is there is some common line or something. Uh, no, we have a refugee education department in the Ministry of Education, and uh, we we get the basic lines from there, and we have we have online meetings from time to time. Uh, so, of course, we know what uh, the others do, and uh, we, we ask for, uh, for uh, instructions when we have some problems or some, some, some for, for help from the Ministry of Education, because there is a special department there. This is very good. This was uh, uh, made in 2016 when the, the, the first uh, big migration flows uh, started. And I, I, I feel very lucky that the, there is a department like that in the Ministry of Education. And for those who have uh, established that, it's, it's crucial and very useful and very helpful to us. May I? Yes, of course. <laughs> um, now, now in, from the UDEC perspective, 
is there could there be something which the UDEC organization could do? Is there like um, some actions or activities or some support UDEC could um, develop? I mean, I think you know UDEC as European organization maybe could uh, well take over some some kind of action, some kind of support in which way ever. Do, do you have a spontaneous idea what what you that could do? Uh, you mean me? You're asking me, uh, Gabriel, or? Yes. Uh, first of all, Maro asked me from that, but I couldn't do it today because the the internet signal in the the camp is not at all good. So I wanted you. Uh, I'll bring some children to to talk to, and after that you can decide what you can do, or we we'll see what you can do because we have excellent and very talented children and maybe if you talk to them we can all see what you can do for these children we had we had a child that um he went to school for only 20 days and the school council de decided and he didn't have any lessons at all before that and he, he learned Gre uh, greek the greek language by himself through internet when he was in an island and with only 20 days of attendance in the Greek school, he managed to go to the next uh, class. He was promoted to the next class. This is, this is amazing. We have children that they're working so hard that we are really amazed by them. So before we say what you can do for them, I, I want the next time you'll have a conference to bring some children to talk to you and to meet them. And we can all see what you can do or we can all do in uh, collaboration. You can come to our, our next online, which is the international one, Pepe. It's uh, the 30th of September until 6th of October. We have our International Democratic Education uh, Conference. In It's going to be online again. And it's going to be a six-day event. Yes. I'll be glad to and uh, to bring uh, not there. I, I won't tell anything. I'll let the children speak because they have so many things to tell you. So, yes, I'll be honored to participate in that uh, conference too. I have you on my list, maybe. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm, for the IDEC 2021. I missed. I missed it at the beginning. Are you an OGN or are you in a state no, school? No. Which no, which? No. I, I am the refugee educator coordinator of the Ministry of Education. In every refugee camp, there is a, a refugee education coordinator. So if, if there are a lot of people like in our camps live 3000 people, we have 800 children. So we are three of us in that camp. I am responsible for the secondary education. We have another colleague for the primary education, one for the kindergarten because there's a huge you see number of children and a lot of work because our job is to identify them, see if they have the documents, to enroll them in schools, supervise their education, be the connector between schools and their parents and everything that has to do with their education. So, no, I am the representative of Ministry of Education in the camp. This is what I'm Great. doing. Is it, is it legally imaginable i guess not but for example if the network of udex schools okay. would um offer to receive students for example this is legally like impossible or would it be like if our school says we would like to take over to receive um, three children and we have families like guest families which take responsibility for them or something like this is this legally possible so possible yes uh, here in greece all state schools are obliged obliged to accept uh, refugee children or accept whoever goes there and wants to enroll and register a school in their uh, child in their school. You know, I have I have faced this, some difficulties or objections or reactions from some school principals in the past. But when I told them, okay, please can I have it written because I have to report to report in the Ministry of Education and then all problems were solved because they know they're obliged to do it. But so where I don't do know. They live? Where do they live? Uh, the children. 
You yeah. mean? They all live, yeah. you know, I am responsible for our Richona refugee camp, which is uh, uh, 20 kilometers far from the city where the, the schools are. So all these, the children from the camp attend classes in Halkida schools. This is the name of our place. So they live in a refugee camp uh, around, uh, around the, the schools. You know, they yeah, are... Yes, sorry. But what is the perspective? Because they shouldn't stay in the camp forever. So the perspective for them would find a family where to live or not? Like an adaptation. They are, listen, they are with their families. We have families there, not oh. only the children. They're not unaccompanied. We have also unaccompanied minors, but we only have 30 of them in the camp. The rest of the children are with their families. It's a refugee camp where we're all families are uh, living for the moment. Yes, and that is the problem you are talking about because of course they never know how much time they're gonna stay in the camp because if they get their asylum, they can they take their passports and they may fly to another country or they may be accepted for relocation to another place. This is a problem. But anyway, as long as they are in our camp, we are obliged to register them in uh, Greek schools. And then when they go to another place in Greece, they, they, get, they may be transcripted in that school. And what is the perspective for the, for the ones which are alone, for the unaccompanied or? Okay, they, uh, they, are, they are, this is an NGO in our camp because in every NGO, in every camp, there's a different NGO who takes care of these children. So they, they are under the surveillance of this NGO. And this NGO takes care of everything that has to do with them. I am responsible for their education because I enroll them in the schools. I supervise their, uh, their education. I talk to their teachers. I am uh, uh, responsible for, for whatever happens there, or, or, or even if they have some troubles or anything. But yes, they have, they're not at themselves. They have the supervision and uh, care of uh, this NGO. And what is the perspective? Uh, Gabriel, Gabriel I'm, I'm sorry, there are other people who want to ask questions. It's, it would be nice if we don't have a dialogue. I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> okay? I'm really sorry. Just that Sylvia is, is waiting for quite some time. And then you can come back, Gabriel, okay? And we can have a private uh, conversation whenever you want, Gabriel. I'll be glad to answer all your questions. Thank you. Thank you very much. Sylvia, did you want to ask something? I'm sorry. Oh, sorry, I, I took back my... <laughs> my hand because uh, Pepe had already answered my question. Uh -huh. <laughs> so this dialogue is very good for everyone. You can go, <laughs> guys. <laughs> yeah. So what is the perspective? They're in, in care of the associations of the OGN, but what is the perspective? For the unaccompanied minors, you mean? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, when they leave the camp, they usually go to apartments in the center of Athens. Uh, and where they stay there under the, uh, the supervision of other NGO. And when they become uh, the 18, they may continue their studies or they try to find a job or they are free to continue their life. If they want to stay here or they take the passport and go somewhere else, if they have a relative somewhere else, this must be may be the case for some of them. Um, no, that's, I don't know. Uh, this is the same perspectives as all the rest uh, of the refugees have in this country. Yes. But is there in this perspective to, that families like adopt them as like, um, is there in, in perspective or not adopt them like, uh, like a care family or something? How, what, what would be the English word? You know what I mean? Yes, yes, you I know, I know. I know, but uh, up to now, the only thing I know for them is that uh, usually they go to other countries because they have relatives there. Even if they're here without their families, they have uh, brothers or sisters or uncles or other families in other countries. So they live for there. They, they, they don't need other uh, families to adapt them. Maybe this is the case in some cases, but I, I don't know. I'm not aware of that. Yes. Sylvia? Yeah, it's, it's not a question so much, but um, I was wondering uh, while listening to you and also what you said, Gabriel, um, I think what um, is 
missing possibly or what we could discuss um, is really a, a political positioning in uh, to some extent of this organization and I know there's um, discussions about that and people who say it, it should not be political where I think you know we should really think about this because there is no such thing as unpolitical if you do mm -hmm. not position yourself it is also a position people within UDEC who are um, involved in this kind of um, uh, projects like Lona East and there's the uh, what's the school on on Lesbos called the um, yeah, yeah, yes, exactly. Yes, and I mean, there are people who are active in this kind of um, direction, and it would be I think to, yeah, to come together a little bit more to to figure out can we, you know, officially take position for um, for human rights. I mean, we're talking about um, education coming from the background of a human rights discourse. Um, that people should have the, the right to decide over their, their bodies, their, their mind, all these things. So I think, um, yeah, we should possibly discuss whether we, we go in that direction. And yeah, yeah that was it. If I may answer a little bit uh, representing, I don't know, uh, the UDEC Council, because this kind of questions Maro, correct me if I say something wrong. This kind of questions were like coming up uh, like with the Black Lives Matters, and in Germany where there was a situation with the, like um, demonstrations again the Corona uh, restrictions and stuff like that. So there were a few requests like that UDEX should should take this positioning, this this political positioning, and for now the the council did not see as is necessary because at one side being a democratic organization it includes already some kind of values the democratic values so this would lead because if we start to position with single movements which we probably agree and think they are important but we would need to start like positioning like with the me too movement and against the what you know there's so many so many like um open fields so it's clear that UDAC is democratic and working for democratic values this is a universal st um, statement i think this is quite obvious including the word democratic and if we start like this political positioning it's like wh wh why yes and why not and where and who, who takes care of it and um what the we want to respond on this also is to invite you and if you feel it's important to you the uh, i don't know if you saw that there's a new structure pilot of UDEC where we have like different circles and one circle will maybe take care of these issues. So if you feel like that this is something important to you, you can get involved, participate actively and develop maybe this political um, questionings. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Gabriel, for pointing that out. And um, yeah, I'll, I'll give it some thought <laughs> how I, how I feel towards what you said. <laughs> Thank you. We need you. <laughs> Come to the circles, participate. Yeah. We yeah, need you and right. you and you and you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if there's still some time and nobody else wants to ask something, I would. Is it possible that I go again? Yeah, it's okay with me, but <laughs> um, Peppy, I, I'm uh, unfortunately I came a bit too late, so maybe you already talked about that, and I don't want to bore the others. Then I would just uh, 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 look at the recording when 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 I can. But um, uh, just before you were talking about like informal structures that um, that were evolving among the the youth um, themselves and. Um, in case you did not talk about that already before, could you maybe elaborate a bit on, on this? I think that's uh, really interesting. Mm. You mean the, the community organized schools in the camp? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, they were um, uh, organized because of the fact that the children 
uh, ha haven't attended schools for four, more than one year and a half because of the pandemic and because for other problems we had uh, with the local authorities. But um, they organized schools, all the communities, the Arab community, the Afghan community, the African community, and then they all gathered together. They had common lessons because whoever knew a language, English, uh, he was giving lessons to all together, Afghan, Arab, and um, they have, of course, different lessons for Afghans, different lessons for Arab when they were about to teach them their native language, and German lessons and French lessons and Greek lessons, some of them, because it's all Greek to me, they say, you know, it's a very, <laughs> it's very difficult, the Greek language. But yes, this was amazing um, how they uh, managed to organize and to decide this, that they had, I know that from the first moment that um, especially the Afghans came to the camp, they, they, they had a huge desire for education. They came to our office, even from the, the next day they came and they were applying, they were giving all the documents um, and asking to go to school. So I know how much, how much they, they desire uh, to go to school. And they found this way for keeping their children and the adults close to education up to the moment they will be able to go to state schools. And it operated and it was very good. It had very good results. And the NGOs helped them by, by uh, printing certifications to give them or to organize, as I said, I said, organizing seminars, online seminars for the teachers the so-called teachers, because um, uh, during this period, some of them <laughs> really became teachers. They knew how to teach the others because they attended these uh, lessons. And we had a lot of meetings, solving problems. Uh, it went on very well, very well. Mm, but did they, um, like within their structure, I mean, did they only, did they focus on, on, on language um, or did they also, I mean, you mentioned before that there was like um, a movement among girls concerning other subjects, you know, like uh, rights and whatever. Um, so, I mean, in, in these community schools, did they um, organize other subjects than, than language or was it focused only on language? It was focused on language. This movement was an activist movement. But uh, during these lessons, they were discussing because I was attending some lessons. I, I wasn't supposed to, but sometimes they invited me. They went there. Uh, for example, when there was a um, women's uh, classroom with a woman teaching them English, uh, they were discussing things about um, women's uh, psychology or things like that, or even vocabulary that had to do for English language with women. This youth refugee movement was something different. It was an activist movement, very important that that too, and that gave them something to do. And um, you know, the main problem in a camp is that people have nothing to do, okay? And they keep asking us every day, give us something to do, or we want to do that, or because they don't work, they keep waiting and waiting and waiting for their asylum papers to come. So. All these things kept the young people and the adults busy and gave them something to do and to hope for and to wait for. It was, it was very, 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 very useful for everyone and for us too, to, to see it and to support it in every way we could. No, I was just... Um... Uh, wondering because, I mean, from what I learned from other... <clears throat> members from UDEC in, in, in I mean, Greece, uh, the educational system is compulsory and all the subjects are compulsory and etc. So it's not a very democratic um, process. So yeah, it was very interesting for me to, to hear a little bit about, you know, how people in, in the spaces that are self-organized spaces, how do they use them to, to facilitate for the subjects that are meaning very meaningful to them, uh, which of course language would be one if you go into a different country and you need to find your way about. Um, um, but yeah, possibly also other subjects that are very relevant to the 
to like the 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 lived experience of um of people um they had they had the subject like that the discussed in those uh, classrooms i know and they were uh, they had celebration for the national days of her women's day they made species speeches and on tuesday they have because Today is the World Refugee Day, as I said in the beginning. Yeah. And on Tuesday, because it's a holiday, on Tuesday they are having um, something celebrating that day. Um, yes, they, it was going aside with the lessons, the language lessons. So everybody feels happy for today. The is there someone who, who feels that something very hot has not been said. No more questions for Pepe, no more interrogation for today. We'll, we'll come back to you in three months, Pepe. I'll be waiting for you. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Really appreciate it. It was very interesting and very enlightening. Thank you. Uh, Keep up the good work, Pepe, because I know you're fighting every day, but you're winning. I just want to remind you that you're winning, Pepe. <laughs> <laughs>